Okay, boardwalk conversion from a 11 horsepower to an 18 horsepower motor, uh, part two. So if you look down there, you can see we've got our two bolts. Now, this is one of the bolts that came with it, and this is a new bolt. Um, notice it's a slightly smaller size. So you're gonna have to change out two bolts, and this bolt configuration right here is just exactly the way it was before. I recommend you take a picture of it so you don't get confused. Um, these two bolts right here, are their only sole purpose is to keep the uh, belt from jumping off when you take the tension off of it. Um, so I also used it because you could have to see the rub mark, which let's see if I can get in there tight enough. There's a rub mark right here. When I took it off, I left the the t tightening screws, the set screws, or nuts, excuse me, the set nuts. I left them at the same position, so I just bolted this thing back on exactly the way it was. So I was able to align the pulley in approximately the same place that it was before. Now, I took off a half an inch of that shaft you see there's still a little bit of extra room but there's a you want to make sure you got a quarter of an inch you don't want that shaft rubbing a hole in your guard um, okay so we got our cable done we got the pulley done we got it bolted on and uh, we got all of our all of our guides in so what's next is to um, and this is the lifter for the for the catch system keeps you from running your blade so what we have left is to put on the electric start which um, there's other videos this motor comes with zero instructions so I won't bore you um, I'll let you uh, you can find that on other there's plenty of people with YouTube for this exact engine with videos for that um, the one thing you will have to do is move this box. This is your lube, your blade lube box, which is just a, holds a gas can with, with a bungee strap across it. You're going to have to move it over so you have a little bit of room because that electric starter is not going to work with your existing box. You're also going to have to weld up your battery box. So I moved everything all the way to the side. And I checked beforehand, I've got plenty of clearance above and on the bottom. So it's not going to interfere with anything. But you're also, this was just welded with four welds across the plate. And I redid it exactly the way it was welded. But, and if you look right here, you can see where I cut. That's how I moved this thing over. Probably about three inches to give myself plenty of room because it's not going to hurt anything being on this other side. I also welded a strut to give this thing strength because you're going to have a big old battery um, way out here on the end and you don't want that thing vibrating so you're going to have to triangulate it so um, that was the other thing that I had to weld. So this is the only welding required is for this uh, relocation of this box and the addition of your battery box. Now you can use a strap or whatever but I just went ahead, I had some all threaded rod, I went ahead and just cut it. And, uh, put a bar on because it was easy for me uh, it's what I had on hand the other thing that you're going to have to do is these lines down here these are your lubricant lines because uh, we're moving this whole thing over a little bit they're going to be short so uh, well not it's going to be short on this top one but if you've already got the machine, I would go ahead and replace the line because these things get really hard. Um, the diesel fuel, I use diesel in mine. Uh, for my blade lube, I use a 50-50. I use uh, diesel fuel with uh, bar chain oil and a 50-50 mix because that is what uh, Timberwolf Blades recommends for their saw blades. And actually, I like it. I don't use that much lube using that system. I know some people use pine saw and water and if there's a few other things some people just use dish detergent but um, I've had real good luck and I don't have any buildup on my blades I've seen blades absolutely just coated with rosin um, 
using dish detergent. So anyway, the downside is is that that uh, diesel fuel really hardens crap up really fast. Let me show you one other thing that we've I've already gone ahead and done. So on your locking system, because your motor is just now slightly to um, this side of the saw, means that there's not quite as much tension on the the belt. To fix that problem, to get plenty of tension on that belt, is you take this bolt out right there and just unscrew this one revolution. And that's all you do. And that, you should have plenty of belt tension after that. What you're looking for is something with that kind of tension, not much uh, devi deviation. All right, I'll come back after we get our electrics done.